Yep. I know my hair's a mess. I'd keep your cap on, man. And I know Tom's hair's a mess. I know it's really a mess. <laughs> but we're here backstage Memphis in May Bill Street Music Festival. And we're with a couple of guys from Vintage Trouble, of course, Ty here, and the drummer Richard. And we're so pleased to finally meet you guys. Saw you on the Who Tour. Yeah, man, yeah. man, yeah. man, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, saw how you just took charge of the audience. We were all ticked off that y'all were going to be performing. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're saying they got an opening act. You got to be kidding me. And afterward, along with about what 10,000, 15,000 other folks, and then afterward, we were all going, "Man, that was awesome!" Absolutely. And you're from LA, right? Los we're Angeles. From LA. Um, well, originally, Richard is in our band. Rich is the only one that's really born in LA. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from uh, Jersey. Mm -hmm. All my family's from North Carolina. Um, Nolly is from Sweden. Oh, really? He's our Scandi Candy. And uh, Rick is from Florida. Wow. So, so how, but we, but we, we, as a band, we're from. So yeah. how did Ben and Trouble get together? Um, I, I met Ty <clears throat> in a place called Laurel Canyon, which is where we rehearse, a place called Studio R. But um, I met Ty late night jam sessions that go on up there. You know, there's a lot of lore, uh, a lot of history in Laurel Canyon, a lot of musical history. Um, and we used to have these really late night kind of dark stony jams that just went on all night and they were really, really like vibrant and just a lot of good stuff happening. And I would just remember, you know, any rhythm or groove I would throw out, Ty would come back with not only melody, but even a lyric, you know? So wow. we just, it was amazing. Yeah, I was like, wow, too. And we were just so connected uh, that when it came time, I think, for Ty to start a new band, then he called me and I was very gracious. As far as Nolly and him, they had played in a prior band. Oh, okay. Uh, and Rick Barrio Dill is um, our bass player, who they had done some session yeah, with. Similar, similar things. As, as Richard was saying, I, I actually had Rick into a session, and uh, just having him play and, and learning what his personality was like. Um, I thought that when time came around, he was going to be the bass call to make. And the funny part about it was, everyone just gave in right away. I mean, with Richard, I called him in the morning. And we were in the studio that night. And with Rick, Rick had just moved from LA to Nashville. Just moved. Wow. Um, but it was in the middle of some flood that never happened. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So he already was not feeling good about Nashville. <laughs> but he'd only been there for less than a month. And I called him and I said, We're doing this thing. Do you want to come back? And he just packed up and moved right wow. back. Wow. He just stayed here in Nashville too long, huh? which is our hometown, Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And we come to the Memphis and Mayfield Street Music Festival every year. That year, we were here. We couldn't get back home because of the flood. Wow. It happened at the yeah. same time, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then two years ago, when, when the festival was over, the river took over downtown Memphis. Wow. So wow. you imagine, you see how high the hill is out here. It was above that. So. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. Crazy. yeah. Crazy. So we said out of 23 years, approximately, there's 17 of them have been in the rain here at this exact location. That's, that's yeah. true. Yeah. You can guarantee crazy. something is going to happen. It's called rain. <laughs> It's called the Rain Festival. Yeah. yeah. They call it Memphis in Mud for some reason. They should. Yeah. And you know about that, it's don't you, Todd? Yeah, I got the middle of the audience got my wellies ago. on. Got my wellies on. <laughs> you got in the middle of the crowd while ago, and you didn't stay as long out down this time as I've seen you in an arena stay out in the crowd. There's less space to travel. <laughs> yeah, Come on. And more mud to walk on. So yeah. I just, no chairs to stand on. No, no, there were, oh, there were shoulders I could have stood on. Hey, but you I, should have done that. I should have, yeah. but. I just wanted to have something to um to, to lead up, you know, next year. I gotta I gotta, I can't give it all out the first year. Next year I'll stand on shoulders. Hey, you know. <laughs> now following your rolling one. Okay. Is it true that y'all played Nashville recently? Yes, we played Mercy Lounge. Mercy Lounge? Mm -hmm. I didn't know yeah. about that. I'd have been there. Oh, yeah, I didn't know really? I was thing about it. Did you have a good crowd? It was basically sold out, yeah. Oh excellent. my god, excellent. Which they say it's hard to do on a Sunday in Nashville. Yeah, I know. Well, usually Sunday, you can say, oh yeah, I'll play on Sunday. Guess what? Not gonna be anybody there. Right. They usually roll the streets on Sunday in Nashville. Right. right. Yeah, but y'all made it special. Nice. And then y'all play Tootsies yeah. after you play Open for the Who, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's very much like it. Sometimes when you play an arena show, okay, it's it. great because it's so exciting and it's so big and you're kind of living that dream that you had from the time you were a kid. But for us, you know, we also like to get dirtier and sexier and, and kind of fulfill our adult dreams and go play someplace that's a little darker and a little grimier where people are a little closer to each other and we can 
actually feel each other's sweat. So then we marched right across the street and, 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 and played the Tootsies. What is it about it that not only do you get the crowd excited, but you know how to control them so easily? And that's one thing that stood out in my mind is how well the audience just related to you. What's with tapes? Oh. <laughs> tapes. No, I, I think what happens is, and I know that this is the way it is for me, we spend so much of our time like having to be in control of our own schedules and time and things that we're going to do during a day that in general, anyone, as long as they feel like they can trust the person, they want to just give in and follow. It's nice to follow sometimes when you're just always hammering at your own schedule. So as soon as people realize that we're a band that is um, open and giving and comfortable, then they just give in right away. And I think that's why they, they just do whatever we want them to do is because it's fun to give in. You know, you can only be dominant so much of the time. You're going to be submissive uh, sometimes. Right. And you have a host for Ty, you know, he's also a really great storyteller. And I think that that's really, are, really good. You know, that's something that, um, it really goes a long way in the front man sort of realm. I mean, to be able to suck a crowd in with good stories, you know, music a lot is stories, you know. And for a guy to be up there to tell you about it and suck you into what's going to happen or what just happened, or to take what's happening in the room and bounce off that, I think that's a gift. And you know what, Richard? You have a gift, too, of trying to get the crowd into it. Yep. You weren't just a drummer back there. You were, yeah, come on! <laughs> no, also, but also the dancer. Also the dancer's got this shoulder thing that he does. <laughs> shoulders, shoulders coming You were getting everyone, woo! Yeah. Well, I noticed that you, you don't much just command the crowd. I think you kind of orchestrate what's happening out there. All of you do. Yeah, and that's, that's what I, something about it. And you play so well off of each other. Uh, it's also, it. we can't forget that the, the audience also orchestrates us. I mean, like we're, we saw it in tonight's set, um, I was going to go into a slow song, because we don't have set lists, we usually just Oh, really? Wow. And I was getting ready to call a slow song, but then the audience, I could tell, because sometimes after we do a couple fast songs, the audience wants to breathe, and that's when I'll go into a slow song. But today, I was going to do that, and I could, and almost, I was, which I love the audience orchestrated, because by rote, I was almost going to go into something slow. But I can see the people were still like, we got more in us. They got more. <laughs> and so then we just went into something fast. So the audience also orchestrates us. Yes. Um, they are in control, actually. It seems like we are the lion tamers, and they're the lions, but it's, it's definitely the other way around. And I think that's why our audiences feel like we're part of a community rather than a band and, and an audience. Yeah, I just wanted to say that, too, that the, the way this band came up and the way we kind of got some wind under our wings in Los Angeles um, was our audience because, you know, we ended up booking these residencies throughout Los Angeles and the only way we were able to actually have a residency was to make it feel more like a party vibe um, rather than you coming to see a concert and there's a band on stage and you can stand and watch and there's a wall there. You know, we broke that wall down and we included the room and it started to become this sort of synergy and uh, it's kind of where our troublemakers hail from, which they name themselves troublemakers. And Your fan base. Our fan base. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. People will come to a party over and over. So that's kind of what happened in Los Angeles. And uh, soon after that, we took it to the UK and pretty much tried to duplicate it over there. Uh, not consciously, we just kind of took what we had sort of felt in Los Angeles and had built up and we took it to the UK. Uh, so that feeling that you talk about is something that we kind of discovered early on. But I think we also discovered it just in the, in the joy of the music, you know, we've all been in so many different bands, and this was the one that felt like, and I even remember Ty saying early on, I just want you guys to do whatever you naturally feel like doing. There's nothing that's unnatural here. And I've said it before, you know, that could be a recipe for disaster, but Ty picked the right players uh, innately or, you know, strategically. I'm not sure what he thought, but he picked the guys that are going to feel a certain way, and we all just naturally did what we did. That's kind of how it all came to fruition from the beginning. Again, tell me about your microphone cord here. He's got a microphone cord. He goes, I don't, I don't know how long it is. Can you pick it up? Yeah. You might as well pick it up. It's more like electrical conduit than anything else. Yeah. It's like a, Look at this. It's like gooseneck. Yeah. It's like yeah, goose it's not like gooseneck cord. It's heavy. And, and I'm singing with yeah. this mic. <laughs> But that's yeah. uh, pretty cool stuff it's, right here, and you use it as a weapon. I mean, as a, an instrument. Nah. <laughs> well, it's it's nice because it's got weight to it. So um, rather than it getting tangled or caught up, it, if I whip it, it chases me. Uh huh. So I can just it just it just does what I need it to do. You get tangled up in this? 
no. tripped over anything? No, but I'm sure it'll happen. Actually, I'm looking yeah. forward to the day that something crazy happens. Yeah. Well, he's but tangled it in other things. I tangled it in He'll whip it across Notley's pedal board sometimes. I'll get it caught in your drum mic. It gets caught in his drum mics all the time. Or come across the bass neck and detune something. Or, but, but that's yeah. rock and roll. Yeah, but but for, me, cool. for me, more so than the mic, what I, the, the drama that I see that's going to happen one day, and I'm actually excited and waiting for it, is doing the spins, because sometimes we're on a small stage and I'm so close to Richard's drums, I know that one day I'm going to be spinning and I'm going to do a full-on <laughs> fall back into the drums. <laughs> and I've already prepared myself for it, so when it happens, I'm just going to laugh rather than be like, you know, embarrassed. But I know it's going it's, it's, it's inevitable, it's going to happen. Yeah, you know what's going to happen too one day on that note? You, you, sometimes you'll take your mic stand and you'll flip it upside down and then you'll spin your whole body with the mic stand coming up. He's going to take out something. Come, or some, or, or some lights, because sometimes yeah. the lights. <laughs> <laughs> or lights. But he's going to take a Nolly or Rick. He can't get to me because I'm protected. Right, right. Because it's usually straight up. So I don't really yeah. do a check ahead of time to see how high the ceilings or where yeah. the lights are. So I think one day it's going to be like a, I'm going to cut up. I'm going to hit a light. It's going to go out. <laughs> yeah. Tell us briefly about the two other guys in the band. What other guys? No! Oh! Hey! Oh! 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 Yeah, oh! I mean, you got the Black Keys! We got folks that drum through the top of the We got um, Rick Barrio Dill, uh, who was left early to, go to fly out of town. Uh, he, I think what's great about Rick is that he's this bass player that he bases everything he does in kind of like a Motown or Stax vibe. He's kind of growing up in that. And uh, he likes to groove, so I was talking to him last night. And what's great is that we have a lot of indicators on stage during our songs, as far as him moving and Richard moving and Nolly moving and me moving, that shows the audience how they're supposed to groove. And you know, a lot of times bass players are the cool guy that stands there and just gets this bass. No, no, he, he dances and I think he gets other people dancing as well. And, um, you know, he's just a, just a great guy. Good old boy. Good old boy from Florida. Well, you know, he, he does got a groove going on, man. That's he does have a groove. Um, and Nale is, you know, I, in, in our minds, and I don't think it's just because of our band, but Nale will go down as like, you know, a, a, a guitar god of, of our time. Like, I don't think of anyone that's better than him. There are people that are just equally as good as him. Um, I very think, seasoned. Very, very seasoned. seasoned. Plays with a lot of seasoning and emotion. And I think that uh, we luck out because of the fact that we're a rhythm and blues band and we don't have horns and organ. So it makes Nale come up with these great riffs that would substitute where you think a horn part should be, or an organ part should be, or three black women singing backup should be. Like his choices in guitar arranging are a little different than a lot of guitar players because he's got to cover a lot of bases and he does it like a breeze. Y'all about to head overseas again? Yeah. So we're going back to Europe? No, first though, we go to Japan this month. Oh, wow. That'll be cool. Good for you. We'll be our second time. We'll be our second time there. Our first time, our record was, it was, it was about six, seven months ago when our record was released. It was number four, it was released number four there. It debuted number four there. And so that was wild because we got to go to Japan and right away we got the plane. Japanese people are running and screaming toward us. And then at our hotel, people are waiting. Let's see if we get our van and signing stuff. That's never happened before. We've always been to a place and worked it up and then people kind of become a little aware of us. Um, we've never been in a place where um, our music preceded our live show. And that's how it was in Japan. Um, and you know, we'd finish shows, at, like huge, huge shows, and the whole audience would be singing words back, and it was just wild. And then there's the sushi, and there's amazing mm, Japanese women too. Wild. But, yeah. <laughs> but we would go on to say, yes, we do go back in June to rejoin the Who oh, for wow. a month, um, all over U uh, the UK and some of Europe. And the same week we um, end with the Who, which is July 8th at Wembley, um, we play with the Stones. Uh, and I, can see, I can see Jagger really oh liking my you gosh. guys. I mean, he <laughs> likes that kind of soul rock stuff. I can see him really digging you guys. I hope so. You know, the Who too, and it's funny, you said something earlier that was interesting. Like, a lot of people have told us the same thing that you said earlier, which is, you know, I came to see the Who, and I don't care about the opening band. In fact, I don't want an opening band. Yeah, I don't. I just. I have to sit through it and whatever. And then they were really intrigued by what was going on. And it says a lot about the Who listener, but it also says a lot about the Who. You know, the Who started out as a rhythm and blues band. Uh, they love rhythm and blues. You know, so for them to kind of uh, embrace us and kind of take us in as their own is, is such an honor and uh, joy for us. And then you know, we went all through North America with them. And then they take us back to their homeland throughout the UK, uh, which is really cool. And what we notice happening sort of from the beginning of the tour to the end is that, 
you know, people started getting on blogs, you know, like your own, for example, and started reading reviews, started listening to the talk out there, getting on websites and whatnot. And so by the end of the Who tour, people were showing up early for Vintage Trouble, mm -hmm. which is really cool. And you know, Pete will come out after the sh or at the encore, or whatever, sometimes, and, and give us some props, which is super sweet of him to do. Um, they also gave us all the back screens after just the second show. You know, when he came out and told us his uh, whole film crew, look, I want these guys to have all the screens. Um, so they've been just so gracious and amazing to us. And what an iconic band! I mean, it's it's like a dream come true. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, we did review your show. We weren't planning on it, but we had to do it. Nice. What'd you say? <laughs> What'd you say? All right, here's how. What'd you say? Richard, oh. <laughs> Richard let me ask you. All right, in, in a one sentence thing, how would how would you describe your music? Because I want to see if it matches what I say, and I want you to do the same. How would you describe your music? Somebody's never heard of you, and you're telling somebody about it. I'd say hard-hitting soul, and, and, I, good. and I only say that, by the way, because I heard that term the other day, and I thought it was really interesting that somebody used that from back in the day, which was, there was soul, and there was rhythm and blues, but there was also hard-hitting soul. Um, we also like to call it primitive soul, uh, because we've kind of stripped it all back down. Um, I think we're a good old rock and roll band, all so, right. with, the, with the soul singer. Mm -hmm. um, well, I would say that it's, um, I say that it's, uh, 1950s, 1960s style rhythm and blues with a rock and roll edge. Here's what I'll say. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix meets James Brown, and they have Vintage Trouble. Nice. There you go. And there's the guitar. With oh, his okay, yeah, there's, there's the Jimi Hendrix love child. Right there. There's the love child right there. <laughs> oh, <my gosh>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're very appreciative of you taking your time, and thank you for the the great performance that you did today in Memphis in May. And, and now the guitar's in here. The guy that you said it wasn't in the band. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait, make sure you say hi, then. <laughs> hey, Hello, fellas. Absolutely. How are you? We just wanted to uh, just come by and say how much we've pushed your band since we saw you in Nashville, Albany, oh, yeah. Brother Who. Oh, thank and you. And how much we so much. have pushed. Yes, what did I say? That's what I said. And I said, you can't keep your eyes off of them, you can't stay in your seat, and you can't stay still. Nice. <laughs> and I also said, and you better sing or he'll come after you. <laughs> yeah. well, I can tell you one thing, down in the photo pit, you ain't guys in the photo pit now. Which, which, there there, today, which there are a bunch of jaded people down there, and everybody down there was dancing. Ziggy, you what? see little Ziggy out there, man? He was just, he was trying to do some James Brown moves. Out there. <laughs> so, That's pretty good. Uh, now, it was really good to see that enthusiasm down in the pit, because usually everybody's just elbowing each other so they can get a good shot. Here. I read that you were on a national television show trying to be a singer for another band. Is that true? Oh, yeah, I was on Rockstar in Excess. In Excess. Did wow. you know that, guys? Wow. Rockstar in Excess, and I we remember that. I remember that very well, actually, because uh, I fought, I'm a big in Excess fan, and I followed that show. And, yeah, I mean, there was all kinds of different types of people. I know. Yeah. 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 It's so funny, a friend of mine that was on that show lives in London now, just faced with me today. It is, Ask for uh, to come see us in, in London with the Who, so it's exciting. Yeah, we're all still friends. It's, it's great. I just love when you can go through so many experiences in your life, and when you realize all those experiences make you who you are, rather than I think a lot of people try and um, negate their past, um, which is uh, to me, I don't, I would never want to do that because it kind of makes you, it, it makes you richer. You know, if if you're just a person that's in a band, then that's all you have. Like. But you know, I'm a person that's in the band. I'm a person that grew up in church. I'm a person that you know was on Rockstar in Excess. I'm a person that was in a Pampers commercial. He's 14 months old. Wow. <laughs> and but, but all that kind of stuff adds up to why we are who we are right now. You know, like someone even said the other day, like so many people say that when you do those shows, it hurts you. And I'm like, well, really? When is the last time any of those people had 14 million people see them per week? I'm like, how does that hurt somebody? Yeah. I mean, like, it's, it's, a, it's a joy, it's a joy. And now we do so much television and everything that the training that I got from doing that show helps helps me whenever, whenever we do it, a TV appearance. Like, I, I just I just love it. I just, I love that, I love that everyone that's from our past get to take part in what we're doing right now. You know, all the people that uh, you know, each of us has come in contact with, you can see them on our Facebook all the time. And it's nice that whatever we've done behind us that we have left such a nice trail that people still support us. 
you know, a lot of times people in your in your past get envious or jealous and don't want to support you. But I guess it's a good thing that we've done some good things in the past that people want to hang out with us still. And they want to let you know that they're proud of you. That's that's a big thing. When you're someone that you're unsure of how they felt about what you're doing right now, it gives you a little message and says, you know, I see you, I follow you, um, you inspire us. Um, you know, we're not 22 years old and we give a lot of people hope and inspiration not to give up what they're doing too soon. Because I think a lot of times people stop one second too early. Or because one of their friends at home or their wife at home or someone says, if you don't stop this, I'm not going to stay married to you. That's really sad because sometimes someone's, it's what people were put on this earth to do and they'll end up doing something else that's not really what they're an expert at and then they'll have to live the rest of their lives feeling like second best opposed to if they would have stayed with it a little longer then maybe they could have really gotten what God put them on the earth to do. And as you said earlier, amen! Amen! Because <laughs> you can tell that you do want to send a message, you know, as we were talking about on the stage there, they like, you know what, say something to somebody, don't ignore it, just let them know that you're there, you know, you love them and you want to take care of them. I think that goes a long way when people hear that coming out of your mouth saying, you know what, these people do care. Yeah. You know, it's about the music, but it's also about, you know, loving, you know, God loving that next person and reaching out and touching that hand to somebody you might not know. It was amazing, Dorian, nobody told me tonight. There was this girl in front of me with this uh, all in silver. You saw her? She was all in, yeah, yeah, all in silver with a well because it was weird. She looked at me and she was crying. And then the second verse started and the second verse as I'm looking at her and I'm crying and she's crying, I'm like, you know, here stands a silver line believer is the is the is the lyric. When you pointed so, at her said silver lines, you well, painted in silver. I know, I know. And that's why I'm like it was the wildest thing ever. Silver and I, with a tear. And I couldn't even get exactly I couldn't get together after that really. Nolly left Sweden 20 years ago. We got him. Ooh, he's here now. Right, yeah. He's here. Yeah, yeah, I see you got all Sweden stuff going on on your car there. Oh, that's what, see, this is a Sweden uh, presented. That's, that's a dollar. dollar. Yeah. That's a dollar horse. Yeah, that's see, see the Sweden thing? Yeah. Uh, every year, the Memphis and May Bill Street Music Festival selects right, a hey, country. Tell me about and this for, is for the our international selection. sponsorship yeah. kind of Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah and so There's they try to get Swedish food Sweden. over here. Yeah, I just went and saw my girl playing over in uh, Louise Hofstede. She played in the blues uh, tent over there. Now. When's the last time you've been back to Sweden? It's been a well, actually, we were over quick uh, last year with Eddie Kravitz. We were touring and, and we got to do three oh, shows. Great show. Y'all did one. Uh, we, we did we toured with them. That's all perfect. over Europe. Yeah. Yeah. That's a perfect yeah. match. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. So we got to Sweden and I got to play some really great shows there. And my mom and dad came. Yes, yeah, so we did Lenny Kravitz, and we also did the Cranberries. We toured with Brian May. We toured with Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. We toured with the Who and the Stones. Yeah. Or like they played with Bootsy Collins. Bootsy the Collins. Impressions. The Impressions. Yeah. Josh Stone. Oh my God, Josh Stone. Josh Stone. What a voice. Wow. And now the cool yeah. thing, we get to go to Europe, play with the Who. We end the tour at Wembley Arena. With them. And for us, you know, it's a holy ground. So nice you know? And then venue. a week yeah. later, uh, July 13th, we played with the Stones in Hyde Park. What's cool though is in between all that, don't think we're not out doing our own <laughs> yeah. shows late at night in some yes, club somewhere. Yes, a lot yeah. of them. Yeah, so yeah. we're doing quite, we're doing our headlining tour interspersed throughout. Yeah, and some double nights. Sometimes we play with the Who and then play after. And after. So wow. when you get off the stage, do you head over to the place, the club you're yeah. playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, that will already be playing by the time the Who is done. Actually, but all that is on our website. Yeah, so we did that in Nashville, actually. We played at the Bridgestone Arena yeah, in Nashville. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All that information is on our website. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You can get it at www.vintagetrouble.com. And um, all the social media stuff is just backslash Vintage Trouble. There you yeah. go. And we are troublemakers as well. Yeah! <laughs> And so are you. Yeah, I know you are. Right. You're watching you this. You got some thick troublemaker gray sweats. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yes. Well, tag yeah. them. Get busy, David. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you for talking to us. Until next.